first hypothesis test you will be introduced to is testing to see if the population mean differs from some hypothesized value mu naught. Here we see a set of failure times in days for a particular electronic component, 6.2, 11.3, and so forth. Regulations may specify that the average time to failure for this component must be more than eight days. Looking at the figures for this sample from this lot, does it appear that this particular production lot has an average failure time of at least eight days? Well, if we look at some basic descriptive statistics, the sample mean is 8.1. Now, the question that we have to ask ourselves is whether or not 8.1 for a sample mean is somehow defining this population, this general population, as having a mean significantly different from 8. This is part of the reason why we perform hypothesis testing. We need to be convinced that this sample comes from a population whose average is above eight days. All hypothesis tests involving a single sample mean will have no hypothesis of the form H naught mu equal to mu naught, where mu naught is some specified constant. In this case, here, the hypothesized value is eight. We'll have three different alternative hypotheses from which we can choose from. The left-sided test, the right tail test, and the two-sided alternative. Each is named according to which side the population mean lies on relative to mu naught. See, the left-sided test has all of the alternative possibilities falling lower than mu naught. The right-sided test, all of them above mu naught, and the two-tailed test has all of them away from mu naught, just not equal to it. It is important to note that SPSS can only perform the two-sided test. I will explain how to get around this problem in a moment. To perform a t-test in SPSS, begin by going to Analyze, Compare Means, and One Sample t-test. Now, select the variable you want to perform the analysis upon and move that over into the section mark test variable. Now we'll need to type in the hypothesized value of the mean. In this case, that value is 8. It's our mu naught. Note that the T procedure automatically generates a confidence interval as well. To set the confidence level, you can click on Options and then select the appropriate confidence interval. In this case, I want the confidence level of the confidence interval to be 90. So we click Continue to get back to the original dialog box, and OK to run the t-test. When we run this procedure, we will get two pieces of output. One will contain some basic descriptive statistics, such as mean and standard deviation of the sample. The other will contain the results of the hypothesis test, as well as the resulting confidence interval for the population mean. It will give you the test statistic and the p-value for the two-sided test. A reminder that we will reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than alpha. If this were a two-sided test, our level of alpha would, and our level of alpha were 0 0.05, we would not reject the null hypothesis. However, we are not using the two-sided alternative. We were interested in the right-sided test. Here we see a simple chart telling us how to calculate the p-value for the right-sided alternative based on the p-value for the two-tailed test. If the sign on the test statistic is positive, the p-value for the right-sided test is one-half of the p-value of the two-sided test. If, on the other hand, the test statistic is negative, 
the p-value of the right-sided test is one-half of one minus the p-value of the two-tailed test. Likewise, for the left-sided test, if the sign on the test statistic is negative, the p-value on the right-sided test is one-half of the p-value of the two-sided test. If, on the other hand, the test statistic is positive, the p-value of the right-sided test is one-half of one minus the p-value of the two-tailed test. For our particular case, the p-value of the right-sided test will be one-half of the p-value of the two-sided test, since the test statistic is positive. So the p-value for this test is going to be one-half of the two-tailed test, one-half of 0 0.896, which is 0 0.448. If we set our alpha at 0 0.05, the p-value is not smaller than alpha, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. To review how to do this one sample t-test, click on Analyze, Compare Means, One Sample T-Test, select and move over the variable you would like to test, then be sure to enter the appropriate hypothesized value in the section mark test value. Click on options to change the confidence level to the confidence interval. Click continue and then OK to run the test. And then recompute the p-value if you're using a left or a right-sided test. 